Hello there and welcome to another edition of the Single African Market Program. This is a program that's designed to bring all information around the vision of the continent of Africa uh, to integrate its economy closer to you and also bring you closer to this whole vision of the continent of Africa creating a single market. Now, all relevant agencies who believe in this vision have come together to bring you this program. The International Chamber of Commerce is the world's largest association of businesses. It has about 45 million businesses around the world. The United Nations Development Program believes in the vision of the continent of Africa and they are supporting this particular program. GIZ believes in what Africa is creating, one single market for its people, and they are supporting this program. The United Nations Commission for Africa, UNECA, believes in this new paradigm that the continent of Africa has set for itself. The Business for Peace Foundation in Norway says this is the right cause for Africa. And most importantly, the government of Ghana believes in the creation of one African market. And this is what our forefathers, up till date, our leaders continue to fight for and make sure that it works for everybody. The government of Ghana, through the Ministry of Trade and Industry, as well as the Ministry of Information, are supporting the single African market to bring information closer to you, to, to understand the vision of the continent of Africa, to integrate its market. And that is why we are coming your way with this particular program. Folks, last week we heard a lot about the integration of the continent's market and the importance of that particular agenda to all of us. We recall that Professor Paul Nugent of the Department of African Studies of the University of Edinburgh, for instance, suggested that we take critical look at the borders, the border towns, that we have in our country if we want to see a lot of growth spring up around the frontiers. That is what we need to be looking at, developing infrastructure at the borders. This week, folks, the UNDP, as well as the NDPC, the National Development Planning Commission, and the Ministry of Trade have met with all MMDAs in Kumase to sort of bring them closer to this whole agenda of the continent integrating its market, to let them understand the new agenda of the continent and be able to take advantage of it. Ghana's National Development Planning Commission, NDPC, the Ministry of Trade and Industries, and the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, have sensitized Ghanaian local authorities made up of metropolitans, municipals, districts and assemblies on how they can unlock their potentials to harness opportunities the African Continental Free Trade Agreement has to offer. The program, which was held in Kumase, acknowledged local authorities as a principal partner in ensuring that businesses can effectively use AFCFTA for their benefit. Uh, it is critical that uh, we are starting now at having these conversations at the local level so that we can see what it is that we can do to transform and help implement the continental free trade area. Assemblies were advised to invest in products and projects which they have competitive advantages in. Even if we are looking at the benefits of the continental free trade area, we also have to think about the investment to make sure that we get those benefits. The National AFCFTA Coordinating Office review the National Action Plan will soon be published. When we started trading, the question that came up is, come one year, come two years, come three years, how will Ghana be judged? Is it by the number of meetings like this we hold or by the number of companies and traders who are trading? Because these meetings, even though they are very elaborate, we can hold them every week, and still, we would not produce anything. We will only be thinking. So as part of the process of putting some of the decisions that we make in such fora into work, the national office went to work and decided to put in place a strategy for getting Ghanaians to actually export. NDPC believes that by now, local authorities must all have their areas where they can have competitive advantages. We talk about industrial locations, it becomes a huge challenge. I will leave that because we have people here who are experts. Okay. 
You talk about industrial parks, it becomes only a dream for many districts. But these are things we should be ready if we are preparing ourselves for after. Now, at that workshop, which was put together by the NDPC, UNDP, as well as the Ministry of Trade and Industry, the experts uh, who formed a panel to share ideas on the Continental Free Trade uh, Agreement advised ministries, advised metropolitan uh, municipals, districts, and assemblies on what they need to do. And also they advised agencies who are playing a significant role in this whole continental free trade agreement on what they need to do to ensure that Ghana is able to lead the way of this whole continental free trade agreement. Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority charged businesses at the local level to familiarize themselves with the AFCFT agreement to remain competitive. The rules of origin will tell you how we can bring in goods into the country or how we can take our goods out of the country. The rules governing the trading of these goods. So also when you are exporting put our potential exporters, you have to know the country, their market, what that market has offered. According to customs, protocol on trading services of the agreement has been completed and Customs is now producing six out of nine annexes of the EFCFTA. Currently, we have concluded negotiations on trading goods, and it's important for our operators, be the SMBs or the large-scale producers, to know all the rules and regulations pertaining to trade in goods. In an extensive discussion, it was emphasized that there's a need to build the capacities of SMEs at the district level, but such efforts must be in broader and continental context. There's got to be a paradigm shift. We now have a market which has multiplied in size. And if we still just build uh, capacities of small, 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 small companies, that still may not be able to meet the market demand. We are looking at encouraging companies to come together, bulking products, having people, uh, groups working together. We are, we are looking at creating re, uh, district value chains, regional value chains, several districts coming together, putting their resources together to be able to produce. 32 municipalities or districts that share board, uh, borders with uh, neighboring countries they deal more with these neighboring countries than within, like the K2 South showed. After brings this opportunity to them, that you can work across another municipality to develop a product. But as I speak, it is not all the municipal and district assemblies that even do have offices of the Ghana Enterprises. This is something that I see to be problematic. Because if you don't have the presence there, it will be very difficult for us to really channel our services effectively to uh, the grassroots where the business activities are really taking place. Local economic development is about endogenous resources, resources that are locally. Now they cut across boundaries after providing this opportunity that, that you as a municipality can team up with this municipality that is not in your country. That is an opportunity. Acquiring land to even establish your uh, company is a challenge. So uh, we want each of the districts to get uh, industrial land available for us. There are a lot of opportunities that after brings. The question is how do we localize that? It will not just come just because after it's in Accra. No. Assemblies must make that dedicated effort to reach out. And how do they do that? By changing also their mindset. We have complained of uh, standard challenges. Ghana Standard Board uh, Authority can certify your products here. But when you get to other countries, they also have their own issue. The after secretariat, I think, should have a central certification office in there. So when you send your product there and they issue that certificate to you, you can send across Africa without challenge. We are no longer going to be assemblies or municipalities 
that are more bureaucratic. No. We are going to see planning officers, local economic development officers who are entrepreneurial in their idea. They are no longer going to wait for small enterprises to come to them. No. They are going to go to the small enterprises and say, how can we support you to export your product? How can we support you to market? On what needs to be done to assist MMDAs to boost their competitiveness, Ghana Free Zones Authority urged local authorities to select a few products or services instead of going for wide varieties. MMDAs should help um, if it's agribusiness. We think that um, sometimes we focus on too many things. So it's difficult to provide the necessary interventions. So MMDAs can select one product that they have comparative advantage in or competitive advantage in and channel uh, interventions to that product. MMDAs were also advised to have business relation offices who will make information available among others. If you are even to send your product outside, why are you sending it? So the districts should have a business liaison officers to mobilize market information in Africa so they can inform the businessmen in the districts. The time has come for us to really put our resources where the, 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 our, our mouth is. We have had a series of plans over the years. We have budgets submitted to the NDPC capturing uh, the activities of local economic development. We are all unable to really uh, give the kind of support that these um, uh, agencies that are mandated to support local economic development activities require to uh, perform effectively at the local level. If you want certification for your products, you have to travel from your district to uh, the national capital or the regional capitals. We need them to have certification offices, like Standard Authority Office, uh, Customs, Food and Drugs Authority. So all this, before you can send your product outside, you have to get this certification. And we want it that way. So the districts should come in to help us do this. And when it comes to the after, it is not no about just being in a little district, but rather international. How do you then go about these things? The, you need standards. You come to us, even sober, we have standards for it. So now what we have done, and my boss is doing right now, is instead of uh, we sitting down in various uh, regions, uh, we are forming a theme that will go to the district and work with the MMDAs so we can educate. For the first time, you have a policy or a program or an agreement that looks like globalization and is being localized. We have, after now coming, and I must commend the UADP, uh, NDPC, for conceptualizing the localization of uh, after. Fortunately, most of the participants, the MMDAs who partook in that particular workshop organized by the UNDP, uh, Ministry of Trade and Industry, as well as NDPC, were from the border areas. And we believe that the issue of growing and developing infrastructure at the borders has sunk really well for them. And also growing uh, their competitive advantages around the borders there uh, have sunk to some of these participants. In the coming days, we'll be visiting the border towns and let you see the true picture from there. We will also be talking to some of the MMDAs, the local authorities, on what they are doing on the ground. Now, as the country is preparing the citizenry towards this whole continental agenda, having a self-reliant economy, industrialization, trading among ourselves, among our neighbors on the continent of Africa. This dream began some time back. We're going to take you through that journey for you to have a rough idea how far we have come. Yes, I must confess, it all must give their best for beautiful Ghana. 
Ghana has since history made efforts to achieve a self-reliance economy through policies introduced by successive governments, such as the operation Feed Yourselves in the 1970s. <laughs> And in recent times, the Ghana Beyond Aid, planting for food and jobs, and one district, one factory, among others. In the early 1970s, there were large-scale importation of tractors for agricultural purposes. New markets, such as the Kaneshi market, were built. Urban transportation was enhanced through the importation of new buses, and irrigation dams were constructed to support large-scale agriculture. Government opened factories such as this salt factory. Cotton production also grew to support the textile industry. And as government played its roles, the people encouraged themselves. Government can have a degree about self reliance but this depends entirely on us. We have to work hard to achieve this. But if we don't and we just sit around, self reliance will never be achieved. And all over the country, Ghanaian entrepreneurs worked hard to supplement the work of the government. Similarly, government today promises to be on the same industrialization trajectory or even go beyond it. Fortunately for us as a government, we have launched an aggressive program of industrialization. So it meant that with or without the AFCFTA, we have been working towards moving Ghana into an industrialized uh, uh, country. There is a clarion call on the Ghanaian to do all it can and support government and grow the nation's economic potentials. Indeed, it is also not surprising that Ghana is either the first to initiate some actions towards the realization of the continental free trade agenda or among the first. Ghana was the first to offer to host the Secretariat of the EFCFTA, one of the first to sign the AFCFTA, and the first to ratify it. Ghana played central role in the actual negotiations of the EFCFTA and was the driving force in the design and development of the detailed framework for the establishment of the CFTA between 2012 and 2013. These first initiatives dates back the foundation set by the earlier leaders of the country who made conscious efforts to integrate Ghana's trade with its neighbors. Ikeja Airport and the drummers and the banners were out to welcome an important visitor, Prime Minister Dr. Kwame Nkrumah from Ghana. The plane was delayed an hour by engine trouble in Accra, but when Dr. Nkrumah eventually arrived, he received a warm welcome from the Prime Minister of the Federation, Al-Haji Abubakar Tafawa Balewa. Here in Nigeria, Ghana's first president, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, visited the Yaba Trade Center, a place where young Nigerians were being trained to harness the potential of trading following expansion in that sector. Dr. Nkrumah saw many aspects of the center, including the fitting, turning, and cabinet-making shops. These efforts by Ghana's first president elicited commendation from subsequent heads of state, including Kenel I. K. A. Champo. Gallant sons of Africa, on this historic occasion, it is only fitting that we should hallow the memory of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah under the leadership of Kenel Ike Champong himself, then head of state of Ghana, Ghana improved its economic and trading relations with its neighbors. The Ghana-Togo relations reached a new peak in 1973 with the signing of a new Ghana-Togo Friendship Pact. Ghana-Togo Entente reached a new peak in January 1973. There was also a brief but important ceremony at the border town of Aflao where the two heads of states Kenel Ike, a champion of Ghana, and President Nyasingbe Yadema of Togo, ceremoniously opened the customs barrier between Ghana and Togo. Traffic between the two states can now move 24 hours a day. Again, 
president of Nigeria at the time, His Excellency Hamadou Diari, made a brief visit to Ghana to renew the bond of friendship between Ghana and Niger. The two countries sealed the bond of friendship with the pact. The bond of friendship is sealed by a pact which will hold our two countries together. In spite of close relationship with neighboring African countries, Ghana maintained friendship with Europe, Asia, and the Americas. The Hungarian president visited Ghana under Kenelike Champong, paving way for more of such relationships. After receiving his guest at the airport, Kenela Champong and President Loshonsi, Inspector Guard of Honor, then drive to the castle Osu to sign a new friendship and trade pact. Dr. Kwame Nkrumah also visited India to look at some of India's achievements and efforts to industrialize. Like Ghana, India is a country anxious to strike a balance between agricultural and industrial economies. Indeed, the commencement of the continental free trade area is another opportunity for the African and the Ghanaian worker, in particular, to prove to the world that he or she is capable of working to be self-reliant. To the other nations, young as we are, that we are prepared to lay our own foundation. <laughs> the Ghanaian worker has always worked hard and tirelessly to contribute to productivity. From pounding share nuts, cotton sold from the Songa Lagoon, to the highly skilled construction and automobile industry. Ghanaian workers had gone about their daily chores, usually cultivating what Mother Earth has endowed her children. As goods and services produced from member states of the African continental free trade area now allowed to move freely from one party state to the other without paying duty. The Ghanaian worker either in construction, production, manufacturing, services and traders alike are being reminded once again that governments are creating the opportunity and it behooves on all citizens to sustain the vision of a single African continental market. Yes, I must confess. Each and every day, the Africa Trade House here is very busy with a lot of activities and we try to bring you some of those news and events that are happening here. In this week, for instance, the Angolan president is expected to engage with a number of business uh, owners and CEOs of businesses as well as uh, the leadership of our country. Also, as you may have seen in that piece that uh, we just aired about the journey of Ghana as far as industrialization is concerned. Our first president, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, visited India in spite of the fact that we had resolved or we have still resolved to trade among ourselves. We are doing a lot of businesses with our partners regardless of where they come from. In the past few days, Ghana and India businesses are partnering in this special news. <music> The idea of India-Africa Trade Council first occurred in early 2020, conceptualized by the advent of COVID-19, leading to its formation in consultation with the various heads of trade bodies in Africa and professionals from the entire Indo-African region. Group Chief Executive Officer of Kingdom Exim Group, James Rajamani, has been sworn into office as the new Chairman and Chief Counselor of the India-Africa Trade Council, IATC. As Chief Chancellor of our multilateral organization, I shall force a strong working relationship with the foreign mission and partners to enable us eradicate trade deficiencies. I shall leverage on this multilateral advocacy to help open trade lines to share across both continents. The ambassador of Namibia said the IATC initiative is a building block for Africa to become relevant in the global economy. For Africa to industrialize, for us to put value, to add value to our own products, so that we create jobs at home, so that our young people stay on the continent and they do not die in the sea. So it is up to you, captains of industry in Africa, to make the African dream 
a reality. Now, if you have to catch a flight to anywhere on the continent of Africa, the schedule is coming on your way, as well as the weather report that you need to familiarize yourself with and the forex rate or the forex exchange uh, for the entire continent of Africa, plus the status of membership of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. On the single African market program, we have decided to be revealing uh, conglomerates, businesses that are doing extremely well and uh, trying to scale or take advantage of the continental market, as well as innovators, people who are innovating, uh, doing new stuff and encourage them to be able to scale it up all the way there, as well as startups. This week, we took advantage to visit our innovator for the week and went all the way to Techiman to see how Enoch wants to take advantage of the Continental Free Trade Agreement to sell, begin to sell his herbal medicine beyond the shores of Ghana. When Kenok completed KNUST, finding a job became a challenge. To remedy this, I started the quest of creating a job for myself and others. I started the research, started from the kitchen. I needed FDA certification to be able to come out, but there were no funds. So I consulted a friend who is also a medical herbalist and also had a similar vision. So we partnered and with his help, we were able to get an affordable facility that has this premise to help with the registration and production of the herbal medicines. Fortunately, our registration went through, but we could not produce on a larger scale because this bucket was able to produce only 25 bottles at a go. We had the funding from UNDP and we purchased a locally manufactured boiler, which is 1,000 liters capacity. And with this, we are now increasing our output from 25 bottles to 2,000 bottles at a go. We were also able to buy a reservoir or mixer and bottling machine. It speeds the rate of work and reduces contamination 
as well. We have the vision of reaching a lot of the African countries because of our mood. We want to be a community-based facility. Yes, we want to be in the rural communities and then also provide the best of herbal medicines for all. So we are looking up to partnering with pharmaceutical companies in these countries and then even health professionals like nurses, doctors, lab technicians, so that we will be able to replicate what we are doing here, there, so that they can get the best of care. Because it's very sad when someone visits a herbal facility and the one there does not know even what he or she is treating. But if the person is able to diagnose you right, then it means that he has done half of the job because he will know that now, since I've been able to diagnose, I will be able to refer, or I, there is a need for me to refer, and there is a need for me to manage, or I can manage. Because the best of physician is not the one who can treat or manage all diseases, but the one who knows that this condition is above me and I have to refer. That's a key challenge, because most of the time, um, people are using try and error. But because of the advancement of technology and then even education, we have been able to be brought up in a way that we can um, consult or clerk and diagnose rights and then also know the right things to do with the herbal medicines and then to refer when there is a need to do so. So we have begun this journey and I am beginning it with you. I want you to tag along and look at where we are heading because I want you to understand this whole vision of the Continental Free Trade Agreement and we are going to do our best to assemble all the pundits, all the experts who would be explaining things to you, uh, whether you are in service, whether you are in trading, whether you... You, you don't engage in any of that. But as a citizen of Africa, you need to know that Africa's market is becoming one. Africa is becoming one. Its nations and people are trying to do things together. So you don't have to move from here to Togo, get into trouble, and not know what to do. If you find yourself in South Africa, you get robbed, for instance, or you fall sick, for instance, uh, you don't even have money on you. How does the AFCFTA cover you? You are a nurse, you want to move and practice your, your nursing in Uganda. How does the AFCFTA cover you? You are a teacher, you have taken some English teaching appointment in Abidjan. How does the AFCFTA cover you? All of these things are very important for you to know. That is why I'm going to walk with you on this journey as we bring you small, 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 small along this whole dream and you will get to understand that everybody will have to be along on this. Thank you for watching the program. I'll see you same time next week.